and I will give it up to our Dean. All right, thank you so much, Jose. So firstly, um, welcome to all of the students and all of the employers. I, I can't tell you how grateful we are that you've all taken time out of your schedules to come and meet with what I hope you'll find are your, your future star employees, uh, students from Chapman. So I was talking to Jose about this. this this event and getting all of you here, it, it says how much um, you, you mean to us and how much we think our students mean to us as well. And I said, I wish that I'd had the chance to do an event like this when, when I was a student. So I've encouraged the students to go to panels to find out what things are about, to use this opportunity to maybe confirm things they were interested in, to look at things that never really occurred to them as exciting possibilities for their future careers, but to really go and use this as a jumpstart to explore different career options. Because our experience has been that so many students come in thinking they want to do one thing, a little more exposure, a little more discussion. You'll find what you're passionate about. So I encourage the students, don't be don't be surprised if you find yourself listening and talking and asking questions about something that before the evening started, you really didn't think you were interested in. The whole purpose of this is not just to, to help you understand something you knew about, but to expose you to new and interesting areas. And these are the people who care about you, the employers who've come. They're interested in you. They want to hear your stories. They want to hear what you want. And I encourage you, if you're interested in what they're telling you, to ask them, well, do you think I could do this? What else do I need? Who do I contact? How can I follow up? Um, this is a huge opportunity. So again, I just want to thank Jose for pulling this all together. I know that we've all done a lot of Zoom over the last 18 months, but the logistics of an event like this never get easier. Thank you, Jose. I'm, I'm hugely appreciative. Thank you, Elaine, for helping make all this happen as well and thank you all the students and all the employers and again if anybody has any questions about how any of this works anything you think we could be doing better please tell me we just want to make this as good as it could possibly be for everybody involved so thank you welcome enjoy learn be surprised that's that's the key um, and hopefully you'll all have a job. Is that right, Jose? Everyone will have a job by six o'clock if this works. That's or a, jo a job offer. Is that the plan? <laughs> That's your promise, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll leave you with one last thing. If anybody out there can help reassure Jose that the Lakers are going to get better this year, you would make his evening after everybody gets a job. Jose's going through a little bit of a phase right now, but he's he's bearing up well. All right, thank you, Jose. Oh, back to you. Thank you, Mike, for uh, letting everyone know that I'm a huge Lakers fan and this is a very tough season. Um, but anyway, so we're going to go ahead and get started with our panel. So if um, I'll introduce our panelists, our first panelist is going to be Natalie Mello. I will not make the introduction for them. I'll just say their name. And our second panelist will be Scott Johnson. And if Natalie, if you could start uh, by introducing yourself, uh, you know, share your name, what you do for a job and they give an overview of you know, your career path. Sure. Um, hi everyone, I'm Natalie and I'm so excited to be here today and meet all of you. So I am a recruiter for a biotech startup in South San Francisco called Interven. And um, we are a, a diagnostics company that focuses on biomarkers on the glycobiome. So a pretty um, specific part of, of biology that we're, you know, it's, it's growing quickly. And so we're always looking for a new scientist to come in and join our team of researchers and clinical, um, clinical scientists as well. So uh, prior to Interven, I met Jose when I was working for a recruiting agency called Kelly Services. And that um, my team was also a science um, based team. So we're hiring for a lot of contract and full-time employment opportunities in mostly in California. 
And um, my career path was not, I did not go to school to be a recruiter. <laughs> so I, uh, I, I went to the University of Wisconsin for uh, conservation biology and geography. Um, but I was always very interested in agriculture and environmental studies. So I got a job on campus working in a lab that studied vegetable genetics, just so that I could get experience and learn about um, the way that research works and um, where food comes from. <laughs> Through that, actually, my um, boss at the University of Wisconsin introduced me to um, somebody at a private company so doing similar work in California um, at a company called um, Vilmarin. And that is a plant biotechnology company in um, central California. So I, I moved to California to work for that company for about three years. But then I decided that I was ready to, um, you know, continue being connected with science, but work more in a lab, uh, sorry, in an office setting where I got to communicate more and spend less, fewer hours by myself <laughs> out in the field. So that's how I ended up discovering that um, I still get to have all the fun conversations and um, talk to people who are so um, up on, you know, current research, but I also get to have a little bit more balance with like things that make me happy indoors, not just um, research. So uh, that's kind of in a nutshell how I ended up here and so happy to be able to, you know, go into more detail, answer all of your questions. Thank you, Natalie. Is Scott on yet? Scott, if you're on. Okay, we will continue the panel with the panel, which is Natalie for now. Well, Scott will join us very briefly. Um, so Natalie, so just to start off this networking event, I'm just gonna ask one question that's, you know, maybe our students are thinking about, why is networking important? Um, I can say, I mean, like I just said a few minutes ago, I, I, I wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to move to California and have a full-time job um, in research if it hadn't been for me just having the initial interest in getting a job in science and going through, you know, through my courses I, at the University of Wisconsin, I would I would talk to my professors and just ask them, are you hiring? Do you know anyone who's hiring? How can I you know, better market myself as a worker? Um, and then just through um, you know, being open to the conversations with people who have careers in that field that you're interested in, um, you know, the new job opportunities or new um, internships, anything can come out of that. So I think you know, in general, networking is how you meet people, just like with friends, you know, you, you're going to um, come across opportunities you would never have known about before. Thank you for sharing. So one of the things I tell students when I advise them is that we have a platform called Handshake where mm -hmm. they can um, look at who the recruiter is for certain companies for certain positions. So men, now that we're talking about networking and how important it is, reaching out to a recruiter would be a very good way to network. So from your opinion as a recruiter, how should students reach out to recruiters? Like, what should they say? Sure, I would say, um, obviously LinkedIn is a great tool for this because you can look up um, who is the recruiter at a particular company you've heard about and maybe are interested in. Um, I would say when you, when you reach out to somebody like me, um, have, a, have your resume ready to share, even if it, you don't, you know, if you're still perfecting it or you feel like it's not quite ready, it's always better to have a resume um, to share so that it provides some talking points back and forth between me and you. And um, also just why are you interested in, um, you know, talking to me or, or potentially getting a job with my company? You know, what interest, what kind of drew you to um, instigate that conversation? So based on what you've seen in resumes in STEM, what is one thing that you look for when you look at resumes when you're recruiting for students? Uh, I always talk to um, new grads and people who are kind of jumping into the, their first job that um, things that you learned in school or projects that you completed in school, if you can describe the kind of the idea behind um, the you know the the different stages of that project or maybe it was a, a semester-long job in a lab um, you know what was the problem 
what was the uh, the steps you took to solve the problem and what was the outcome so that we can see that you understand you know how um, what it takes to complete a project and kind of like repeating back to me how you actually accomplished it Awesome. Yeah. So that's something we, I talk to students about, so it's called the star method, you know, the, the yeah, exactly. results is what you're talking about. Yeah. So if mm -hmm. any students here have seen the star method, you're hearing it from a recruiter herself, that that is something yeah. to look for. Awesome. So, so let's say I have a student who is like really involved in research and they really want to get like into the industry, like a biotech company or something sometimes students may not feel qualified because they're like, I just done nothing but research. What is your advice to a student who is thinking like that or who wants to get into, you know, the industry, but only has research experience? Mm -hmm. I would think of a couple um, different answers. One is um, sometimes it's, it works to just reach out to a recruiter and to get, uh, get that conversation started because um, like, for example, at, at my company, we have internships that are geared towards that exact thing where Maybe you're not, um, you don't have quite enough experience yet for, you know, a more senior job, but we could have unpublished jobs or have jobs coming up soon that are more fitted towards your skills. And um, the other thing would be, if you've had jobs in something like retail or um, tutoring uh, experiences where maybe it doesn't directly apply to doing a science job in the future, um, there are still so many applicable skills that you can take from those and include on your resume that helps me see that you're great at working, maybe doing repetitive tasks. If you're sitting, if you're looking to be in a lab doing pipetting, your ability to stand on your feet at you know a retail job and do something repetitive and work with people in a fast paced environment, those types of skills can really translate. So don't be afraid to put jobs on there that aren't exactly related to science. Thank you for that. We do have a lot of like first year students who do have retail jobs or they work at Starbucks and they don't really know how yep. to say it on their resume. Um, do you have any tips for them right now? If like they were to work on the resume after this, how yeah. they could phrase it to make it seem like a very good transferable skill? Yeah, I would say think about, you know, if the job description has things, um, it's if it's asking for things like project management, what does that actually mean? And how, and what skills did you learn at Starbucks or wherever that you can actually apply to that? Like, um, you know, uh, if you had a, a list of things that you have to accomplish every night before you can close the shop, um, there's an order to that. And you can kind of translate that to um, managing your timelines, managing projects, um, even something like having to count money and handle money, you can use that as showing that you're responsible and you know how to like manage day-to-day -day, um, activities, so. Awesome, great advice. So for our students who are here, hopefully you're paying attention to the advice Natalie is giving you. These are things that I would tell you as well, but it's better to hear from someone who's in the field and is an actual recruiter. So Natalie, my next question is, let's say these students get through their first process and they get an interview. What are like three best practices students can do to prepare for these type of interviews within STEM? Sure. Uh, one thing is um, really take a look at the company itself, do some research on um, not only just what their product is, but maybe where they are in, if they're a startup or a really far along, you know, fully developed public company, um, any news that they have published recently, um, things like that, that can give you a lot more. If you get stuck in an interview and you feel like, oh, what do I say? You at least have some talking points where you can um, bring up that you read something cool about them on, on the, you know, on the news or um, you read about a new paper that they published, something like that. Um, additionally, I would go through, if there is like a specific job description, go through it and look at exactly what the skills are that they're asking for and make sure that if you do have that skill, um, you know, go over the details of what, what the, um, you know, what the science is or what that technique really means in, in terms of, you know, how you can describe that you did that in a lab and that you think you could jump into this lab and do the same thing successfully. Follow-up question to that. So what are some key terms 
like key STEM terms that students should be included on the resume that you see, that you may see that some students don't include or, you know, professionals in general don't include? Sure. Uh, I would, I think um, any very specific equipment that you feel comfortable using, like a, you know, mass spec or um, a certain type of of tests that you've run over and over in the lab, even if it's if it's like a, a brand name, sometimes people like recruiters will use those types of keywords of the different machinery that that we need somebody to come in and, and use. Um, let's see, we what else do we? Um, uh, if you have uh, one, this is sort of a, a adjacent to that question is that if you are unsure if you know how to do something, don't um, don't put it that that it's a skill that you have and that you're an expert at. Just in case somebody asks you that question, you don't want to get caught feeling like you um, you know like you exaggerated on your resume. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for your advice on resume and interviews. Hopefully, this will help some students, you know, get some get a little push to start working on the resumes and start applying to internships or jobs or any opportunity that they might not feel super qualified. Now you have an example here of how you all could use those transferable skills, which is something that we really yeah. highlight. Um, so we're going to move a little bit away from this question and I'm going to go back to more of like, you know, recruiting. So I know the news and the and data has been saying that the job market is looking good for STEM right now. So in the past year, what are some observations that you've made in the job market within STEM? Mm -hmm. Like, are there um, any trends? Oh, sorry. Are there any trends no. that you're seeing? Um, I mean, I think everyone probably um, can imagine that any job related to COVID um, has just been crazy in terms of my hiring for that. So in the last year, um, we have, at, when I worked for Kelly, we, we hired almost exclusively um, PCR and RNA type positions in COVID testing labs. Um, those went from almost zero to, you know, our, everyone in the country has have, had a COVID test this year. So uh, that industry, not only did it pop up out of nowhere, but the pay rates on those types of lab jobs, the clinical jobs just went way up because there was so much competition for those. And um, so I think that really has changed the market for for anyone, especially um, entry level lab uh, workers, because you don't need a ton of experience to get a job in one of those labs. It's really um, once you have the DNA extraction and PCR skills, you can work in those pretty quickly out of college. Awesome. As a recruiter, what is like the top advice that you would give to students? Like if there was one thing they could take away from this panel, from anything that you said, what is one thing that, you know, students should know? Uh, I think, uh, you know, be yourself and don't be afraid to go for, uh, you know, attempt to get um, contacts and get job referrals from people, you know, ask for advice. Don't be afraid, you know, don't let being afraid of the job hunt stop you from starting, you know, that process because, once you get into it and start interviewing, it gets easier and easier every time. The more, you know, you, even if you fail on the first one, the next one's going to be easier and you're going to know how to um, avoid the mistakes that you made in the, in the past. So just go for it and don't, you know, don't feel like you need to hesitate until everything is perfect. So we have a, you know, variety of STEM students here. If let's say one of them wants to reach out to you, um, what, what type of students should reach out to you? What, by that, what I mean, are you looking for like a, like a first year, a fresh, uh, like a second year, a fourth year? Like which students are you opening? Are you open to mentoring? Sure, um, I'm happy to mentor any, uh, you know, any college students. For um, in terms of interven, we do have internships that are open for people that are third year. Um, so if that's the kind of advice you'd like to talk to me about, that's um, usually for people that are um, a little bit further along in their, um, you know, undergraduate career. But um, I would say job hunting is, is kind of where I feel like I have expertise. So um, if you're looking for a, a, like an industry job, that usually would happen um, within six months of graduating. Otherwise, the, the companies will have different budgets and different, you know, hiring plans 
if you're more than six months away. So that's probably a, the best advice I can give <laughs> to those students. Thank you, Natalie. So we have four minutes left on this panel. If students, if you have any questions, feel free to type it in the chat. And, you know, during these last four minutes, we could ask that question. So I'm going to give, you know, a couple of seconds to see if anyone puts anything in the chat. And Natalie is one of the recruiters attending this event. So she will have her own breakout room. She will be in breakout room, uh, room eight. So if you want to talk to Natalie after and ask her a question, feel free to go to her breakout room during the second session of uh, this, this um, networking night. I don't see any questions as of now. You know, so thank you, Natalie, for mm -hmm. providing all your advice. Ooh, well, Okay, I see one comment. Thanks for sharing, <laughs> Natalie. Oh, by the way, Thomas is also a recruiter. So there, Tomas is also a recruiter. So there's a couple of recruiters here as well. Oh, we do have an we do have a, a question. Do you have internships for PhD students too? Yes, we do, um, and we don't have quite as many as we do for um, our our undergrads, just because the undergrads um, we have everything from like all the different lab jobs, but we also have um, project management, um, legal, you know, outside of STEM for PhDs, we, we only have STEM internships right now. Great question. Another question. Do you recommend role-playing in preparation for interviewing? Definitely. That is something that, um, I feel like I can help with if anyone wants to do that. Um, it's really just about repeating questions, you know, repeating answers, you don't have to memorize them, but just feeling comfortable answering the questions that um, are kind of typical interview questions will make it a lot less scary to go into the interview when it's the real thing. I have a follow-up question to that. So how would you answer, or what advice do you have for students uh, when they're answering the question, tell me about yourself? Hmm. Um, usually I think it's um, great to include something a little bit personal that can kind of relate to why you're interested in working for a particular company. So um, for a company like ours, where we're doing um, early stage cancer diagnostics, maybe there's something that has affected you, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be too, you know, personal or sad, anything like that, but just something that really motivates you to want to work for a company that's um, solving that type of problem. Um, or, you know, it can even be just that you have, uh, you've grown up having a really strong interest in that type of science, something like that can really relate to, um, you know, why you have such a strong interest in being at that company. Thank you, Natalie. So I see two more questions and I'll ask one of them, Zach if you could ask Natalie that question in her breakout room, um, feel free to connect with her. But the last question before we end this panel is, do you offer internships to foreign students that hold F1 visas? We, um, right now, I don't think we're doing internships for people that need sponsorship, but we do offer employment to those people. So um, it's definitely uh, something that we don't, um, you know, no matter where the person is from, our company at least believes if they're qualified, then we would consider them to work here. Awesome. Well, thank you, Natalie, very much for taking the time to be part of panelists and giving our students very good advice. I hope you all learned something new today. And please connect with Natalie during the individual networking session. You could also scan her QR code, which I believe has her information, um, or you mm -hmm. could just go see her. And she is a very good resource for all of you. So please, please, you know, connect with her and of course connect with all of our employees here as well. So now I'm actually going to hand it off to Dr. Elaine Schwartz. Hi everyone. Uh, welcome tonight. I'm very pleased that uh, we have so many um, of our partners with us. Uh, Natalie, I want to uh, sincerely thank you for the terrific advice that you gave to our students. Actually you reinforced a lot of what's being taught this semester in many of our seminar classes. And so I'm um, uh, hopeful that that reinforcement actually uh, will turn into action uh, by our students. So thank you for the great advice that you provided. I also was um, uh, particularly uh, thinking about what you said in terms of uh, basically resilience and how to bounce back when you are 
uh, facing uh, doing this over and over and not necessarily getting the outcome that you were looking for, but how to evolve and how to improve. And uh, basically reaching out to those folks that you can gain that advice from. So uh, I highly recommend to uh, don't be afraid to reach out to individuals. Most people want to just help you. So thank you so much, Natalie, for being that resource for our students. Um, I'd also like to uh, thank Jose for putting together this really great event. Um, lots of uh, wonderful professionals that are here with us are, uh, and our staff for uh, helping put this event together. Sarah, Steve, Vera B, Rebecca, Margaret, and Haley, I really appreciate your, um, your contributions to making this event happen. I also want to take a moment to thank our professionals that are here with us. Um, I am so thrilled that you are with us because uh, it's, it's a lot of time that you're spending with our students, not just here, but the devotion that you have to see our students uh, progress in their careers and your willingness to help them um, imagine what their future careers could look like through this exploration. And without you, we couldn't uh, begin to show students all the various pathways that are possible. There's so many amazing career pathways at various interfaces between disciplines that are beyond what uh, our students can possibly imagine at this moment in their, in their development. So thank you for mentoring them, for encouraging them, and for being partners with us in our endeavor to help our students uh, get to their next uh, phase of life. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about the logistics coming up uh, for the next steps of uh, this event. Um, we have, as Jose had mentioned earlier, two breakout sessions. The first breakout session is actually pre-assigned. So um, those of you uh, that are students will be uh, sent into breakout rooms assigned to you. The breakout rooms will have uh, several professionals in the room, and they are designed to expose you to areas that are adjacent to the area that you're studying. So that uh, breakout room will happen for about 20 minutes. So you'll have kind of a broad-based conversation um, to begin with. Uh, then there'll be some messaging that'll come through telling you that the breakout room will close and uh, we'll come back into this room to uh, have about five minutes to regroup. And during those five minutes, Jose is going to talk a little bit more about uh, tips for internships and such. And then um, the networking that of your choice will happen. So you'll have about 40 minutes in which you'll have the chance to select um, the person, the professional that you would like to speak with, and they will have their individual rooms based on um, the information that was provided in the website um, to, to be able to determine the room that you would like to go in. So feel free to um, select individuals that are directly in the area that you are thinking about, and also consider exploring something uh, that is completely different from what you originally think about as a career path. It's important to gather information. This is kind of like an informational interview that you're doing where you're uh, bringing in um, new thinking, new opportunities into your um, into how you are experiencing your undergraduate education. So last, I'd like to uh, direct my comments to the students. Um, go into the networking with uh, the knowledge that these professionals are, have volunteered their time because they want to help you. So with that, don't be intimidated by having a natural conversation. This is only a conversation um, so the process should be very comfortable and very relaxed. 
and hopefully will result in a really great connection that you might continue to develop uh, even after this event. And feel free to then uh, thank the, the, uh, the professional. You might want to email them to continue a conversation or a relationship. Those are all great uh, follow-ups to this event. So with that, I hope you enjoy your networking. And again, professionals, thank you so much for being here with us today. Jose, I'm going to turn it back to you to uh, open the breakout room. Scott Johnson is here. Yes, Scott Johnson is here. Steve, man, you keep following me everywhere I go. What's going on here? Yeah, I know. I'm a stalker. <laughs> <laughs> Good to see you, Steve. Good to see you, Scott. Mm -hmm. Well, Scott, how nice of you to come. <laughs> uh, Linda, oh, always good to see you. The whole gang is here. This is great, awesome. For our students who are witnessing this, as you can see, networking <laughs> in STEM, everyone knows everybody. So networking is important. Prime example. Well, right everyone here. knows Scott. Oh, gosh. Hopefully that's a good thing, Linda. It is. <laughs> So for the students here, this is Scott Johnson. I will introduce him in a bit. And, um, but first I just wanna go over some things before we get started. So I hope you all found that career panels very insightful and you were able to learn about multiple careers in STEM. Um, so now we're gonna transition into the individual networking sessions. But before that, I'm gonna go over the website that will help you kind of choose where, um, if you don't know who to talk to, if you need like, suggestions um i'll show you through the website how to do that and then scott johnson will actually go over some networking tips he has for you uh, but before that i will share my screen and i will guide you through the website let me first put it in the chat okay did everyone see the website yes okay so this is right. So this is the website that I created for this event. So if you want to see where the rooms are going to, who is in what room for Monk Company, just click here. If you're looking, if you have a phone, it will be very similar to this. And I have a list of everybody who is attending today. Let's say you don't know who you want to talk to. You don't know where to start. I have a suggestion list here of, you know, people that you could network with. This network, uh, this uh, list is not exhaustive, and it's only just me recommending certain people they could talk to. I'm not giving you everybody that you should talk to. So I'll give you an example, environmental science and policy. So right here, we have these employers who these are, so when I invited all these employers, they were able to select which students they would, they want to mentor. And obviously, because it is STEM, a lot of them pick a lot of a lot of students, a lot of majors. So I picked the top ones who, you know, had less of your major. And then um, these are the people that I recommend that you should go to first. These people are also in other rooms. So I kind of separated them. So you wouldn't all go to one person at once, but this is how it would look like if you click on there. And let's say you go back home. So you could go by major. Again, a lot of your majors have a lot of crossover. So bio and biochem and chemistry, you might be able to, you know, you have a lot of the same skill set. So you could talk to all the people within the other majors as well. Same with like physics and with math, you could go into engineering. You, you have very broad skill sets. So you could do that as well. Something I want, I do want to highlight is the graduate program. So we do have a couple of graduate programs here. So we have the food, and, food science program. We have the, uh, the teaching credential program. We have computational and data sciences, and we also have the School of Pharmacy to make sure to go network with them as well. They could provide you with general advice about their uh, general advice and information about the program, or they could, you just want to network with them and see what a degree in that with that uh, what what job you could get with that degree. So that's the website. I also have, oops. Let me go back home. So I also have a list of these companies who are uh, looking to, who have year-round internships. They indicated that they have year-round internships for you, summer, uh, part-time, 
and full-time positions. So I encourage you to please use this website throughout the next remaining 30 minutes of this event to kind of, you know, guide yourself and see where you want to go. So that's, that's it for the website. And I will stop sharing my screen. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the networking part. For some of you, this may be your first time networking. For some of you, this might not be. Everyone here, um, regardless of how experienced we are, we all had our first networking event. Uh, so we've all been in your shoes, so please don't be nervous. In the end, you're just having a conversation with somebody and you're making technically new friends uh, within your field. So I'm gonna go ahead and let Scott introduce himself and he's gonna provide you with some networking tips. All right. Thank you uh, for the introduction, Jose. Hello, everyone. My name is Scott Johnson. I, I serve as the Director of Technical Services at a medical device technical consulting firm called Square One Engineering. And I also serve as president of a large nonprofit group focused in the medical device industry in Orange County called Device Alliance. Uh, for the purposes of this networking event, a um, couple of best shot practices, and I'm, I'm, Jose, I am speaking virtual networking, of course, some of the best ways to make a good impression, although you are virtual, not having that intimacy with interacting with someone, there are a couple steps and good best shot practices you can take to actually make yourself stand out. And it's interesting because Steve Malish and I have actually talked about what it's like to be a young professional now in networking. Um, a couple of things that you really, really want to just keep in mind. So number one, please be prepared to listen and ask questions. You know, the old adage of you have two ears and one mouth for a reason, right? Listening is twice as important as speaking. Um, make sure that you are engaged in the brief interaction that you have and you're being cognizant of everyone else's time. But more importantly, ask for an opportunity for a follow-up. Hey, can I talk to you offline? Can we potentially connect on LinkedIn? What can we do to continue this conversation? You would be amazed at how many young professionals fail to do that follow-up and the ones that are persistent with the follow-up that want to go meet someone for coffee, want to continue the conversation, you will stand out amongst your peers. It's such a common mistake, but it happens so often. Another one, in respect to your follow-up, do your homework, do a little bit of due diligence about the person's background, learn their story and get them to share their story about their personal journey because everyone likes to talk about themselves and that will also help you help you create a more meaningful engagement and so once again just taking the virtual to the real and then i would say just as a final stay in touch with the network you know steve malish linda demario these are friendships you know that were once professional and now i consider them good friends of mine in the industry but these relationships have been nurtured over years and years and now I'm confident to say that should they need professional assistance, any type of help, I could lean on them, they could lean on me, and that's truly what networking is all about. It's really a garden. If you don't water it, nothing grows, right? So it does take time, and I know people tend to get a little myopic and they think very short term, but I promise you, Orange County, the world gets smaller and smaller every day, and people remember names, and you are the future leaders of the community, so as fellow Panthers, I implore you, do your homework, always listen, and make sure you follow up and stay in touch. Great advice. Great advice. Um, so something Scott mentioned was uh, LinkedIn connecting. So something that if you now you have certain a little bit of time, go to your LinkedIn, copy your profile link, and be make sure to share that with the employers. Um, again, let's be mindful of time. I know sometimes conversations could go on. Uh, be nice to your fellow Panthers and make sure you're giving everyone the opportunity to network with each other. So if you have like, if you feel like a conversation is gonna go a little bit longer, I think I suggest you to highly, uh, you know, follow up with them and give them your information. I also wanna share this. So Scott actually has a podcast. Scott, if you wanna just briefly talk about it. Certainly, thanks. <laughs> uh, so um, I host a podcast uh, called the Device Alliance MedTech Radio Podcast. It's an opportunity to, for me to speak with local and regional and even now global med tech leaders in the realms of R&D, regulatory and quality, manufacturing, startups, large scale companies. Uh, it first started off as just a very fun project for me to get in front of very smart people and learn a little bit from them. It's now evolved into kind of its own entity where we're up on 50 episodes and we talk with a multitude of disciplines throughout the medical device and life science region. Um, one of the stats that I really like to share with everyone, and this is from the Chapman Economic Forecast, 
is that the medical device industry of the 281 industries in California, MedTech is one of the top two for the fastest and largest growth over the next 10 years. I speak with some of the best and brightest minds on this podcast. Uh, if you're ever interested in a particular discipline, by all means, uh, please check out the podcast and hopefully uh, there'll be something cool to learn. Awesome. I just have to throw it out there for students who are career exploring. Um, that's a very good way for you to learn about different careers. You could play it on your commute. You could play it while you're working now, whatever, you know, however you listen to a podcast. So I highly recommend. So now with that, we're going to start the networking session. Again, it's individual. So each one has their own, each employer has their own room. You are free to choose which room you want to go to. So we're going to go ahead. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started and have fun.